Hello everybody and welcome to the round you have all been waiting for. You've seen Simon Lazat, you've seen his channel, you've seen other pros channels, you've seen Thomas Gilbert and Martin Hendel on ours, but this is the Julian Murphy and Justin Murphy head to head challenge. The number one round that everybody's going to be watching. Yeah. The Brothers Grimm. We That's are it. ready to go here. And uh, this was shot just before the, all the quarantine laws uh, kind of came into effect. So we were lucky to get it in. And I believe it was a crisp, cold morning, Julian. And look at that. We have a store. It's a retail store. 51 Woody at Drive in Brantford. Check it out, guys. It's a lot, a lot of stuff there. A lot of great stuff. So mm -hmm. help support the good cause, which is disc golf in Ontario and Canada. <laughs> and here we are. You can see me uh, hurting my back in the process, and my form's never been the same since then, as you can see here. It's just bad. I don't know. It looked pretty good to me. That's a good-looking line. Not an easy hole. Some good B-roll here. Uh, yeah. I'd like some tips on my forehand, if anyone wants to help me out. Just uh, the one tip, though. So here's <laughs> Justin. Rated 9.51. Actually, 9.54 now after my... Oh my god, where'd yeah. you go? What happened? Why? Why'd I, you die? I don't know. That's the first thing that came to my head when they said do something silly. I'm trying and to give me an advantage. Julian knows he has an advantage by that sinister laugh right there. And he's ready to go. The more handsome brother, obviously, it's he knows it. And <laughs> you. <laughs> Here we go. Rated 8.76. So we are going to have a tight matchup. Um, yeah. And uh, you will see as we go along what happens. We have no idea what happens here. We've never seen this. No, nope, we haven't seen this um, yet. So. so we're kind of excited to see the round and uh, see how these guys play it out. Yeah, see who wins. Julian, what's we, what do we got here on hole one? This is kind of a tricky one, I guess. Not really. Yeah, 236 feet. It's a left to right hole. Uh, there is a line straight at it, but you got to miss all these trees here. Um, the more common line is a forehand um, out to the left of that. And because it's kind of wide open, and you got a path towards the basket. You can also throw a right hand, backhand uh, turnover shot, but it's far touchier. Yep, okay, I got my multicolored flick here. Uh, favorite disc in the bag, it is stupidly overstable. Um, if you really want a, a meat hook that's uh, reliable in any condition, this is the one. It's also good for ground play. And Hi there. Uh, <laughs> hello. And I often use it for even 80, 90 foot up shots because it has a tendency to sit where I want it. So it's a decent result. Probably about 28 feet. Uh, that'll be a knee knocker, Julian, as the first mm -hmm. uh, putt of the day in our in our 1v1 challenge here. Now, big shout out to G-Star Plastic. I know there's a lot of haters, but for a Firebird, my God, it's one of the best discs. Yeah, you throw that thing a lot. And uh, when it comes out of the bag, I know I'm in trouble. As Julian goes to about 26 feet, definitely closer than me. And I'll be up first here as we see Lisa in the background catching the putt footage. And wow. Okay, I made that. Nailed Good. It. Good start. Good start on a cold March, March. morning, I think. Early, Early March. March. Yeah, yeah. It sounds it sounds a boot right. See if you can match. Okay, the fierce is in. Damn. The Pierce Fierce is in, and we've got a a star frame. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my this is my <clears throat> first round actually putting with the fierce. Was it really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good start. This set looks like it's a good choice for you. I'm sure that plastic felt good in the conditions because it's a little bit grippy and yeah. it's I, good plastic. I, I've switched to them completely now. Um, oh, was... I've seen you lately. Julian, this guy this guy's a 50 feet and in. You never, never, you're not going to miss. Unless it's 15 feet and in. Yes. <laughs> those are the, those are the, the tough other. ones. A yeah, couple of other. birdies there for us, though. Good start. One down through one. And Julian, we've got the, a very simple hole, but it can get a little dicey on the putt. Yeah, and most of the uh, most of the issues with this hole come from the elevated basket. Um, the basket itself is probably six and a half feet to the top, I would imagine. Top of the uh, cage. Yeah. Um, You'll see when I try and get it out. And uh, it's 197 feet. You want to take a wide uh, sweeping backhand on this one and just have it fade in towards the basket because you avoid all these low-hanging branches. Yeah, it's that big tree there in the middle, you can throw a forehand around it, but you, it's not as open as this simple hyzer shot. Yeah. And that was my jawbreaker zone to about 10 feet, which I'm great, very happy with because any closer, I'm like some sort of an overhead turbo putt or something to get it in. For sure. And that G-Star Firebird, I'm assuming, comes back. Yep. And normally, like, I usually throw an Envy from here, but uh, the Firebird worked on the first hole, so I just decided to keep it going, and it worked. Oddly enough, he threw forehand, then backhand, but you've got a tester here. Okay. That's a great putt. Someone <laughs> yelled. That was probably me. Now I'm feeling the nerves. I'm like, Julian's not going to miss today, I think. You can see the guys that we were playing with in the background here. Um, this is the head-to-head -head challenge, though, so we didn't have them in the coverage, but a um, couple of good guys. Brian Gould, who works at the store. Jesus. And, uh, 
That basket's too high, guys. That was. It. And here's the bag on putt. Bag this on is bag Jim on Jim. Graham. Yeah. Fifty feet, elevated basket, bag on the shoulder, and guys, that's how he plays, and that's how he puts. Good player too. Yeah, a local uh, Brantford legend. And so it was good to play with these guys and kind of see what uh, the locals throw and how they do it. There you was. Know, I could not putt like that with my bag on. No, absolutely not. There were some a few shots I remember that I'm like, oh, that's a line. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's always cool to play with locals. Speaking of locals. This is a core hole on a local course in Brantford. <laughs> and it's 259 feet. It's a par three. Um, it's fairly open. I mean, there are a few trees in the way, but basically you want to just throw something straight at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it's a little bit more open uh, to the left of the basket, so a forehand um, will often make an appearance here. Yeah, it but... gets you closer. Mm-hmm. It looks like I'm... S- okay, so that's a 2017 Rainbow Stamp Firebird. The stamp is almost gone because that lived in the Chicopee Pond for about a year and a half, and whatever's in there ate the stamp off it. It's and so much stank. Uh, yeah, it reeks. And that's not a great shot. I'm not happy with that. I kind of short-armed it and uh, opening the door for Julian here. Yeah, you, you got a putt, but it's circle two, so, and mm-hmm. a long circle two. Yeah. I'd put it in the 50 feet range as Julian throws that G-Star Firebird again, and I know when that comes out that it's going to be good, and I was correct. Julian is... Not so bad. Looking at a, <laughs> looking at a birdie, and I've got the pressure now with this stupid 50-footer, so... Bam. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, there was a doubt. Bef- then I let go of it. I'm like, oh, it is in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. There was yeah, doubt before it. I let go of it. Let's go. Yeah. That was a good putt. So now uh, feeling good after knowing that Julian's probably going to tap in a birdie here. And I believe I tell him this. And he doesn't like it. <laughs> you know I miss these. <laughs> Doing a wind check from eight feet. And he's in. <laughs> three down through three for both our... Uh, oh combatants Julian and that's an 850 rated bag displacement you're gonna say that I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah beat me to it um, okay three down through three yeah. so we're, we're actually doing pretty well and it, it is an easy start yeah I find the front nine a lot easier than the back nine um, not that either of them are are too too hard um, depending on the layout but I set a goal for myself whenever I'm playing this course I want to be minimum six seven down that's how I that's for myself personally yeah. that's how I want to play this course it gets harder on the back too mm-hmm. these are muskets now this one is not a musket this is a long, a big boy menu, yep. uh, adult size chicken fingers, the five strips, not the three, <laughs> 372 feet. Uh, both of us are probably throwing full drivers here because we don't really throw that far. I'm going to go with my DDX, probably a nice flippy one. And uh, the basket's precariously perched on this hill. So if you miss something sh- from short of the basket, it could get way down and have a tough comebacker. Yeah, like For sure. <laughs> and I said something to Jeff there and he laughed and then I waved. And yeah, that is my DDX. I love this disc. Yeah, this is your main it's my long drive. distance driver. It's my probably, driver, yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. I like him. There's a lot of glide on these suckers. You got to get the right angle, though, because this one's beat in. Heiser, flip, but oh, baby. straight for days. It's very understable, and it's good distance, but... Um, oh, it must have hit a tree or something there at the end. Yeah, I thought that was going to sail past Lisa. Great, good shot um, distance-wise, but I, it, I just uh, didn't account for how understable it was. And what do you got here? Uh, I was throwing my Axiom can of mayhem, Axiom mayhem. Um, it's well, that had a lot like of a Heiser sh- on Anheuser. Well, this looks good, though. Yeah, it didn't do Is too Is that bad. what you were hoping for on this one? I, I'm playing for a three, typically, yeah, yeah. on this hole. Same here. If I get real lucky, I can get down there, but, yeah, like, we, you still got about 100 feet. Yeah. So, Julian up first, and if I know something about Julian, his upshot game is good. Yep, I'm correct, and that, Not was so that Envy? That was my Axiom Envy. Yep, and I've got a jump putt with my, probably, Swan, or maybe it's a zone. Yeah, that's of, a jawbreaker zone, and that's good enough. Yeah, big fan of Axiom discs, just because they're always the prettiest. They are like, really they nice so looking cool. discs. Now, shout out to Discraft's oh, game since Paul's come in, because yeah. they are crushing it in the, in the swirl game. Real. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Par for myself, Julian will probably do the same. I actually don't remember. <sighs> now, Julian, I noticed that's a very thick mini you got there. Do you, do you have a story behind that one, I think? Uh, yeah, so I played around in uh, Saigon, Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, with a couple of guys that uh, run a league there, and it's a tonal course, and um, I didn't have enough uh, dong to buy a <laughs> disc, um, but I did have just enough dong to buy a mini off of them, so I made sure to get one um, with the local stamp on it. So Yeah, if anything I know about Murphy's, it's our dong situation. Yeah. All right, so both pars there. That's a great story. Thank you. I'm envious. That's a, it was probably 80, a really... dong, something like that. 80,000 dongs? That yeah. seems like a lot. Um, like four bucks? I know. <laughs> inches number five 257 feet uh this one is definitely a backhand flip up mid 
or maybe a fairway around the side. You could get a forehand there, but I, this is one I finally think that the, the backhand's more open. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I think I'm up first still, maybe? You yeah, should be, yes, yeah. okay. So I got my wasp that now lives at the bottom of the Foxwood Pond. Yeesh. Yeah, it's a nice one too, it's new. Hole four at Foxwood? Yes, sir. Yep. And that's flipped up nice, but hopefully have that stable finish. I've never yep. thrown a wasp, actually. But uh, it's a buzz look, with more nice. fade. It's it's very much as advertised. It flies true to its numbers, and I'm okay with that. Twenty three feet or so. Mm -hmm. Julian, uh, going back to that. Looks like I'm finally using the G Star Firebird again. <laughs> so is that just so I, I know? Is that four gap. through five? Yeah. <laughs> this looks good. And really, I could have thrown it on hole have four. I would have gotten wow. far anyway. Two good shots again. So, uh oh. Get away from my desk, you little. Yeah, fella. Don't take the Firebird. You can take my wasp because I, it ends up not being in my bag anyway future so 23 or 4 feet for myself here this is to get another birdie so I'm looking my chops at this and that was hooked <laughs> you could tell out of my hand and I pulled it here we go I am close and yes. I have a lot of potential to get a birdie here that's good oh what was that oh a reset the dog was bugging you I remember that yeah. and that reset messed with me yes um, I have horrible mental game when it comes to putting the smallest thing in the background distracts me the smallest sound and that's Probably something I should work on. Ooh, a squirrel. <laughs> um, I remember the one time we had a conversation about seven or eight months ago. You'd been playing for about two years, and he goes, <laughs> when you putt, do you look at the basket? I was like, what? <laughs> See Brian Gould here, crushing a putt. Great putt on the death putt. And Julian goes, I don't, do you look at the basket? Because I kind of just like look away after. I'm like, I look at it what? at the start, and then I would kind of just like... Yes, I pick a link desk. on the basket or on the pole, like a nick on the pole. You, I don't, my eyes don't leave it. And he's yeah. like, oh. And then he became a better putter. Yeah, it, it helps when you look at what you're supposed to be throwing the disc at. Speaking of better oh, putters, yeah. Julian and I both wish we were on that one as we both missed uh, inside t mm, 25 feet. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, the toughest hole we've seen yet, I would say. 315 mm -hmm. feet-ish. Maybe a 314. Yeah, lots of trees in the way. Yeah, forehand, Jim, bag on Jim told me it's there. I, I, he hit a tree early. I, I don't think it's there unless you really get lucky. But if you throw a flip up fairway maybe uh, or a mid or maybe a dry, I don't know, mm -hmm. flip up something and get it to ride all the way down there, you can get there. And I've got a leopard three here on a big hyzer. Flip to flat. This is looking good. Oh, that's a great shot. Oh, okay, I'm happy beauty. with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to miss miss that one. Like well, <laughs> oh, we got a true tracker on Justin's shot. And By the shout out to Evan com. Hungate. Uh, he's someone I play with sometimes, and I have this disc. I found it. It was in my bag, so I picked it up and threw it here. And I got to get this back to you, my young friend. We got to see you at league when it starts up again. And is that the G Star Firebird? That is not a G Star Firebird. That's my G Star Mamba that okay, looks yeah. identical. Yeah, that if that was a Firebird, you have a lot of arm torque. Because <laughs> that turned, and that's a great shot, too. Oh, yeah. So those look, are they the same color stamp? They're identical. Okay, so that, have you ever made the mistake? Um, I kept saying no, I haven't. And I've been saying that for ages. And then a week ago, I actually made the mistake for the first time. And what was, like, was it a forehand with the Mamba? or was It was it like a, a backhand and that I meant to throw the Firebird on. And I ended up sailing it about 100 feet past where I was trying to throw it to. Like that? Kind of like that. Yeah. But uh, not quite. Oh, oh now horrible. the door's open for Justin here. Let's go. Come on. Bonus birdie. No. <laughs> So we kept watching each other putt, and uh, it's like we neither one of us wanted to oh, give anything man. to the other player, or sorry, did want to give something to the other player. Then neither other of us wanted to take the opportunity. After you, sir. God, that was <sighs> oh, Julian tucks that in the bottom left corner, and, no and Lisa's saying, "Do you guys know how to putt, or like what's the deal here?" <laughs> We're uh, running out of uh, memory card space for all the putts that you have to make. Yeah, no kidding. So another, we could be five through six here, yeah, and we're not. Mm -hmm. With uh, some putting woes, maybe uh, uh, you know the the exhilaration of being on camera and playing disc golf uh, in March in Brantford, beautiful course. Maybe just kind of we're getting complacent now. We wore off. Yeah, maybe yeah, it could be. Um, and now I know I'm gonna totally blame the new putter here. Uh, nothing to do with. But the you didn't at blame all. it the first three when no. you made the great putt. Okay. No, uh, it wasn't the putter's fault at that point. Right, but now it is. But now it is. Julian, 279 feet here. What, what's the line? This one is... It's uphill, too. A, an uphill, uh, just a backhand line, really straight at the basket. You yep. want to throw maybe a, a mid-range if you've got the distance. I throw, I believe, a fairway driver. I thought you were going to um, say Firebird again. I was like, yeah, of course. No, no, not this one. I think this is a T-bird hole for me. Yeah, I got a meteor here. So this will be a hyzer flip with a mid. And that should flip and glide. They're great discs. I'm really like... I obviously throw a lot of discraft mids. Um, Beautiful shot. That's a good shot there. 
So that's 280 feet. That that's my kind of if I need some distance with a mid, I get that. Um, the only other mid I don't bag that's not discraft is an anvil, and Julian goes wide here with a T bird. T bird. I don't know what I was thinking. Was that were you trying? Do you remember trying to go wide, Annie? Uh, no, I think, I, just, out I, think I just lifted it up. Maybe it's been a slip yeah. out. It's not horrible. You got a Julian distance here, 60 feet. Oh. <laughs> That was closer than your 20-footer on the last hole. <laughs> and I've got an opening here. Will I decide to take it this time? Yes. Bam. Almost, uh, <clears throat> almost, almost went through. Jeez, though, that's, yeah. I didn't see that before. That spit almost through. So finally, the deadlock between yours truly and his truly is been, has been broken. Yeah. But, he, but don't expect it to stay that way or do. You be the judge. Bag on Jim, tapping a bag Choose on this option down here 15 for footer. <laughs> Julian makes the Choose your own adventure. Choose this option. For There's Gouldsy. I don't ever. Uh, he's got a ton of power, guys, if you haven't seen him play. So the deadlock has been broken. Birdie for myself, par for himself. And we're on to hole eight. Who himself? Yes. Hole eight, uh, which is um, a must get, if you ask me. And we're going to get to that right now. That we're looking at the beautiful Grand River there first, though. Julian, what's up? 175 feet. Uh, there's a bunch of trees in the way, but you can play out wide to the right or the left. Um, you see there's a couple more trees in the way on the backhand line. Uh, so if you have a good straight forehand, that's a, a, a pretty open play. Backhand. Either way to go, though. Oh, you have a straight forehand. Yeah, that oh, I, yeah. Thought of that. I don't have one, that's why. I think the, uh, the open, most open play, but it's a little more risky, is a forehand with an overstable disc like this obnoxious flick I have. And then hopefully Julian shows us that touchy backhand line. So I need some ground play here. And, and that's ground play because that disc knows what to do. <laughs> Love it. And that should be a bird, hopefully. And Julian going backhand with the fierce, maybe? Yeah, this will be the fierce. This is my first. This is a prototype. Uh, oh, God, that's a good gap hit. Pierce. Come on. Sit. Great shot. Now, that's a touchy shot. So that, I appreciate that more than what I just did. And it's inside the circle, so I have a... I won't be able to make the putt. Yeah, at least it's getting into position back there. Will she grab this? All right. Oh, let's go. Fat kid on a fence, just rolling into the basket there for the Smarties. That was a great putt, Julian. Thank you. About time I get one in after missing several yeah, shorties. Yeah, we both are, seem to be answering that cold spell we had of putting. Yep. And there's a birdie for myself, so Julian not letting me get to, uh, another stroke on him here. Mm -hmm. Bag on Jim. Bag on Jim. Out. As uh, a bag on Jim would, Beauty. tapping out with his bag on. And there's Brian Gould's bum. Here we go. After hole eight, both getting the bird. Justin's still one stroke ahead uh, because of the uh, hole seven birdie he got. Yeah, and the great putt that you just did. Mm -hmm. you kept it up at one. And so we are headed into hole nine. This is the final round on the front nine at the Brantford course, and I believe that this is not too hard of a hole, if I remember correctly. No, I'm, I'm still undecided on the play. I, it, I think backhand probably is the right play here. I, I think I throw a forehand uh, with my anvil, which is the only discraft mid I don't throw, like I said. Um, but this big tree on the left of the basket here is what knocks down a forehand. Yeah. So the backhand, you can get there much easier, I think. I just don't really feel comfortable with how... I think there's some early trees on the tee mm -hmm. that get in my head for a backhand. If I hit one, it's like, oops. So I'll go with this anvil here, a special edition anvil. How Wonderful you disc. discs you threw on each hole? It's insane. Uh, well, I look at the hole, and I decide in my head what I would have done. <laughs> that's fair. And I hope that's what I chose, and that's And you, you hit the late tree, but uh, it's still fine. Yeah, that's circle one, which you should be on a hole of this... Yeah, caliber let's say feet. and good for julian going on the backhand here because that is i think the optimal shot and what was that julian that was my axiom theory uh under stable just a hyzer flip straight goodness out. gracious that was a great shot you just went under the basket there oh man julian's uh i don't like playing julian in forest courses because he hits gaps absolutely no problem all the time and i got this little bit of weird footing here and some branches in my face so that felt good nice putt. thank you and you might have been thinking, ha, you're going to get one here and tie it up going so into the back nine. there's a chance again. So that felt good. A little bit uphill, probably about 25 feet. And then Julian's got this for for maybe 12. Yeah, it was a really short putt. It was kind of obstructed with a bunch of stupid little twigs in the way. But they were neither dead nor detached, so I had to putt through them. Yes, uh, and that was a great drive too, Julian. Ace run plus you got the bird and bag on Jim with his bag off, throwing his forehand here on a hole that we haven't probably seen yet. Yeah, it didn't, look, it didn't look familiar. Three? Nonetheless. No, on four, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The long one. Yeah. Nonetheless, I'm six down through nine. Julian's five down through nine, and that's a good start for both of these commentary huge, uh, folks. Huge start. Um, so we're going to see uh, the leaderboard through nine. Leaderboard. Goals. Look at that. I just like seeing my name on it. That's, uh, that is pretty cool. See. End picture and score. We're one, like it's, not, it's a race. So 
stick around for yeah. the back nine here because uh, you're going to see the end of the, the round that you've been waiting for for months. Yeah. We've you guys will be able to sleep at night after this. For To my follower on Instagram, I've mentioned it. Uh, that's me. <laughs> that's you. That's Justin. <laughs> yeah. So I've mentioned it, so you can yeah. watch it. Oh, I, I know. I saw it. Um, and you're going to see the exciting finale to this uh, head-to-head round. Yeah, it's close too. And uh, guys, toplinkdiscgolf.com. Check it out if you want to get some discs ordered to your house. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ryan Claire, there's a beauty. Brian, and Brian Gould, check him out holding, I think those are wizards with the True North stamp on them. Correct. Go like visit him too. Yeah, yeah, he, he's the fellow that's playing with us uh, casually as Julian and I do this uh this hyper uh, aggressive important round. Yep. Super, super important. PDGA almost rated. Almost. Uh, not quite sanctioned, but we'll see. So stick around. See you then.